So we just went from equation to graph in our previous lesson. Now we're going to go from graph to equation. So um, here's some pieces of information. Some of them we know, some of them we don't know yet. Um, but we're just going to go through. So if I can locate the max and min on my graph, then I can use those to calculate A and C with max minus min over 2 and max plus min over 2. Ramas, can you shut the back door for us? Thank you. Um, oftentimes we use the variable B to represent the period. So if you see me using that, I'm referring to the period. Um, can you guys please just make a small edit for me in your lesson? We're going to switch radians. We're actually working in degrees. So switch radians to degrees. I tried to edit it, but it messed up all the formatting. So I couldn't do it before I printed. Um, we know that we can calculate the k value by doing 360 over the period. And then if I rearrange that formula, we can calculate the period by doing 360 over the absolute value of k. Remember, the period always needs to be positive, right? So um, when we do absolute value of k, it just eliminates any like horizontal flips that have happened or anything like that. The last thing is the phase shift. And the phase shift is different for sine than it is for cosine. Cosine and sine are shifted versions of one another. So we noticed in our previous lessons, if we slide back up to the sine and cosine graphs, this cosine function graph is really just exactly the same. It has all the same properties as sine, except it has slightly different y values. And those y values are just shifted versions of our y values of sine. So essentially, sine and cosine are very similar to one another, but they're just shifted versions of one another. Um, so when we go to find d of sine from a graph, what we'll look for is we will look for where the sine function normally starts, which if I look at the regular sine function before any transformations or anything has happened, this is the midline of sine right here along 0, 0. And just to remind you, the midline is like the c value. Um, it equally separates my mountains from my valleys. That's what we said the midline is. So sine usually starts right at the midline, and then it's rising up into a mountain from there. We call this the rising midline. So for sine, whenever I'm looking for the d value, left and right shift of sine, I'll look to see along the midline where that rising midline is as it starts to go up into a mountain, OK? So that's the normal starting point for sine. If I'm looking for the d value of cosine, we'll see here that cosine usually starts right at a maximum. So if I'm trying to find where a cosine function has shifted to, I'll look for that maximum location. Now, of course, there's many different maximums because we know these periodic functions just continue in that wave format. So there's going to be multiple different answers that I can get for rising midlines and multiple different answers I can get for maximums because we'll have lots of different mountains that have maximums on them. OK. The graph, it's, for a it's for D, the D value. Okay. Of course. Yeah. OK, so let's do an example. So first things first, we're going to identify the max and min. So the y value of the max, y value of the min. Patrick, what are they? 3 and negative 5. Good. OK, we're going to use these to find A and C. So firstly, let's find A. We'll do max minus min over 2. A is also just like the amplitude value. So if we find the number of units from negative 5 to 3 and just cut that in half, that should be A. Um, this is just like a little kind of like cheat formula to help us with that. Um, Yes, so A will be 4. Let's box that up. That's going to be what we enter in for A into our equations. OK, second thing. We can find C as well with the maximum and minimum. The C value is the midline of our graph, so it should be equally in between the max and min. So basically what we do by adding the max and min is we kind of like find the average of the max and min um, by adding them together and dividing them by 2. So we should get negative 1 for this. And I'm actually going to take that midline, and I'm just going to pencil it right onto the graph, just with a dotted line, or you can use a highlighter or something, because we're going to use this later. So I'm going to pencil that in at negative 1. It also just kind of like helps me confirm that I've found the c value correctly, because if, as, as long as I found that correctly, 
the mountains should be as high as the valleys are low. So does it look like this cuts our graph right in the middle of the mountains and valleys equally? I think visually that looks pretty good, right? So that helps me be a little bit more confident that we have the right answer there. Okay, the third thing that we're going to find is the period, and then we're going to use that to find the k value. So the period can be measured from any two corresponding points on a cycle. It can be measured from a max to a max, a min to a min. It could be like a rising midline to another rising midline, but we want one complete cycle. So any ideas for how we, where you can measure this from, Jose? Um, so four units, and how many? How much is one unit? One block. Yeah, how much is one block? Thirty. 30. So if I'm going four units and each block is thirty degrees, how far is that? One hundred twenty. Okay, so that's our period. I could have also measured from here to here. That would work. One full valley and one full mountain. That goes from 0 to 120, so that works as well. I could measure from min to min. Any two points that are the same on each cycle. So if our period, or B, is 120, we'll use our formula that says that K is equal to 360 over the period, which, again, we, we call B. So that should give us a K value of 3. And this one asks us to find a sine function, but we're also going to find a cosine function as well. So let's start with a sine function. I'm going to find d of sine. By using that midline that I penciled in on my graph, and I want to trace, as I go left to right, I want to find where I'm rising up from the midline toward a mountain peak. So where does that happen? If I go along the midline, where do I start rising up into a mountain? Jose? Around um, Yeah, it happens right here. At that point right there, I start rising up into a mountain. OK? So this is the D of sine. It's the rising midline. Okay, look for the left, along that midline line, look for the left side of a mountain before you go up into the mountain. Um, so 60, right or left? Right. Wait, so what's the rising midline? So if you go along the C value line, we're looking for where it starts rising up into a mountain. Uh, yeah, if the units are in degrees, you can say degrees. Now there's also other options that I could have used for the rising midline. What else is the location of a rising midline on here? 180 is one. Jose, give me another one. Uh, 120 is not one. No. 300 is one. No, that's going down. So there's this one, there's this one, there's this one. There's also like right here, negative 30 or negative 60, I guess that one is. Um, you could have used any of those, actually. Typically, we'll just choose the closest one to the y-axis, but there are multiple correct answers here. As long as it's on the left side of a mountain, so like here, here, and here. Any of those could have been the D of sine. This is for sine. So for D of cosine, if we're also creating a cosine equation, or if we want to create a cosine equation, we'll look for the location of the maximum. So. Give me a location of one of the maximums that you see on there. Talking about the x coordinate. Griffin? Oh, would be uh, 90. 90 <laughs> could work. So we could say 90 degrees to the right. What's another option that's close to the y axis? Jose? Um, we could do uh, 210. 210 could work, which is here. Could you Nathan? Negative 30. Negative 30. So we could say 30 to the left. Uh, 330 also works. Yep, so any of those are acceptable. Um, I might just use the one that's closest to the y-axis, which would be 30 to the left. You can do either. How do we know what the pair of function is? So any 
function that's a wave function can be expressed as sine or as cosine. Um, so we can create either one. So I'm showing you how we would create. It doesn't matter. We can create it as sine or just as cosine. They'll just have a different devalue shift. So I'll show you on Desmos after this how they're the same function. Question? Okay. So we're going to create our equations. Um, just as a reminder, this is our base function. Um, same thing with cosine. So we're just going to fill this in. So we found a to be 4. k was 3. d of sine was 60, right? So I'm going to put minus 60 in here for 60 to the right. And then c was negative 1. So we'll plug that in here. And then for cosine, cosine will be the same function, except we'll just switch cos, and we also must switch the d value. So we'll switch sine to cos. Same k value, same c value. And then I'm going to do 30 to the left. You can also do 90 to the right. But if we do 30 to the left, I'm going to do plus 30 in here. If you want to do 90 right, you'll do minus 90. Either answer, answer is acceptable. So both of these are actually equations that represent this graph that we have here. And I'm going to show you on Desmos. When we enter them into Desmos, you'll see that they actually overlap each other. So it's two equations that actually represent the same function, the same graph, but they're just expressed as different functions. One's sine and one's cosine. Wait, so if I was Griffin, go ahead. So for like the one, if I was to do 90, would it be negative 90? Like Minus 90, yep. Yeah. Yeah, you could kind of think about it like that, right? It's two different things that represent the same thing. It's not obviously not the same as coterminal angles, but same idea, right? Two different functions that represent the same graph. So, yeah, Manette? Um, would you ever create a question like, where we have to solve to get two equations, like to solve the same graph? Or would you um, like the left side, right side? Not really, but it, it would be like an easy check to see. Um, okay, so let's just look at Desmos quickly. I'm going to show you guys, this is the first function that we just found. This is the sine function. And if I plug in the cosine function, which is here, and I make this visible on our graph, you're actually going to be able to see that these functions are the exact same graph, right? Even though they're different, one's sine and one's cosine, as long as I switch that d value shift, they're just shifted versions of one another, sine and cosine, so they end up giving the same function. Okay? <laughs> So the shift for sine will always be further to the left than the shift for cosine? Is that what you're asking me? So I might ask you for both. I might say express it as sine and express it as cosine. So A, C, and K are the same for both of them. Sine, we're looking for the left side of a mountain. So basically like rising midline. So this location as it goes up into a mountain, right? And then, and then, that, and then, cosine, and then cosine, we look for the maximum. But then what does that tell you? For the, it tells us the d value. But like, what if that was on the other side? What, what if what was on the other side? Can it never be negative? It can be negative. This was negative. No, like the other side. This could be negative. There's one over here that's negative. Sine is negative 60. I could have used that. Yeah, but like, what if it was on the other side? Could it be negative? There's one over here that's negative 60. I could have used that one. Okay, there's infinite answers because there's, this keeps going forever and ever and ever, right? So I'm going to have lots of different answers that I can use. So cosine is always the maximum? Yep. And then, then sine is always like, what is going to start going up? Rising from the midline. We call it the rising midline. <laughs> so it starts going up into a mountain from that C value line. Yeah, so like the C value yep. line is always the measure. Yep. So it has to be on the C value line, right? Going up into a mountain. Um, not in this class, no. You'll, you'll see the graph of tangent in grade 12. Okay, so let's try this one, guys. Um, who can tell us our max and min? We'll start there. Max, max. Jose? Okay, raise your hand next time, okay? Okay, max, 5, min, 1. So from here, we're going to do A and C. Max minus min over 2, max plus min over 2. So we'll get 2 for A, 
And then for C, max plus min over 2. And that'll give us 3. Immediately, I'm going to just make a star on this. This is the midline. So immediately, I'm going to go over and just pencil this in. And that will help confirm to me whether I have like a mountain and whether I have mountains and valleys that are equally spread apart by this C value, which it looks good. So mountains are as high as the valleys are low. OK, we need to find the period now. We need to measure from two corresponding points, hopefully not estimating. So find two corresponding points. Jose, what do you think? So I did the top point, and since one of the squares was small, I managed to see that it was like about half. So I did the bottom mm, It's too much estimating for me. I want like exact cross sections. So where are points that we can use on exact cross sections, Ramas? It is 90. How did you measure that? You could kind of look maybe like from here to here. Yeah. Um, I think the best point, Nathan, what did you use? The thing on this C. Yeah. Like this to this is probably like the perfect two points to use because those are really the only points that are on like an exact cross section that we can see. So if I measure from 30 to 120, we know that that distance is 90 in between there. That will be the period. From there, we can find the K value. We'll do 360 over the period. So I'm measuring from rising midline to rising midline. I'm measuring one full mountain and one full valley. That's one cycle, right? <coughs> You may have been able to figure this out by estimating, but ideally, if we cannot estimate, that would be much better. I mean, some people were trying to sort of like estimate from the max to the max, but those aren't on like exact points that we can measure. So it's not ideal. Daniel? OK, so there's our key value. Let's do the last two here. Um, so this one, we're just going to start with a sine function, but leave some space because we're going to do cosine in a second. Um, D of sine, who can find the location of the rising midline or one of them for us? Manette? Um, 30. 30, right or left? Uh, right. Okay. That works. This is a rising midline. So that will be D of sine. And that happens at 30 to the right. What are some other options? Do you guys see any more? 300, 300 could work, yes. 120 can also work. Negative 60, 200 also works. Yep, any of those. Uh, sorry, what was that? 210. Oh, yeah, sorry, 210. That's what that one is. Yeah. OK, so any of those would have worked. I'm going to go with 30 to the right, because that one's the closest to the y-axis. So we'll just go there. So we're going to make the equation here. Um, yeah, so if there's degrees on here, then yeah, we can use degrees as well. Okay, so let's set up the equation. We've got um, 2 for A, and then K we found is 4. 30 to the right, X plus 30 or X minus 30? X plus minus for right. So D is positive 30, so when we put it in, it becomes negative 30. Plus three, yep. Yeah. Okay, this one's kind of hard to find cosine because cosine is, we're looking for a maximum, and I really don't know where this maximum falls. I would have to estimate it in order to find the location of that maximum. If I look at all the other maximums, it's the same story. I have to estimate where all of those are. I can't really figure out exactly where those maxes are. So there is actually a mathematical way. It's a, like a little trick that we can use to switch from a sine into a cosine function. And it comes from understanding the original sine and cosine functions. So I'm going to show you on Desmos the original graphs of sine and cosine so that we can observe what's going on with them. 
So let's say sine x, and we'll go cos x. Okay, so here's our two original graphs. Maybe I'll just knock the scale a little bit here. Let's do three. Okay, so here's the sine function. That's the red one. Here's the cosine function. They're pretty much the same, right? Like if you look at them, they're the same graph. They look exactly the same, except they're just shifted versions of one another. Daniel, can you put that away, please? Okay, so they're shifted versions of one another. How much would I have to shift cosine to have it overlap onto sine? The maximum of sine, by the way, um, maybe I can adjust the scale. Step will be, let's go 30s. Maximum of sine occurs at 90. So, so how far would I have to shift this maximum in order to overlap with the red graph? 30. Not 30. Oh, 90. I'd have to shift it from 0 to 90. So if I take my cosine function and I shift it 90 degrees, watch what happens. I'll shift it 90 to the right. Now these overlap. Sine and cosine are the exact same function, except they're just 90 degree shifts of one another. Agreed? OK. So now that we understand that, we can kind of understand how we could switch from a sine function into a cosine function. I'm going to write the info on this little space on the next page below. That one's asking for sine, but I'm going to show you how we go, if we have a sine function, how we can create the cosine function. OK, so if I have a sine equation, like so, I'm just going to use the base sine function. If I have the sine equation, and I want to make it into a cosine equation, I will find the new d of cosine by doing this. So new d of cosine will be whichever Whatever shift already exists, so the existing shift of sine, d of sine. And is the maximum going to be further to the right of the rising midline or further to the left? So if this is the rising midline right here, is the maximum to the right of that or to the left of that? So this is the rising midline. Is the maximum to the right or to the left of that? It's up here, right? It's to the right. So I'm going to add that 90 degree shift that we talked about. Because remember we talked about how sine and cosine are 90 degree shifts of one another? We just did that on Desmos? Yes. yes? OK, good. But what happens if I stretched out my function or if I compressed it? Because if I stretch it, let's say I stretch it by 2, that 90 becomes 180. Or if I compressed it by a half, that 90 degree shift now becomes 45. So I have to account for any stretches or compressions that happen. And I'll do that by dividing 90 by whatever the k value is. And that will account for any stretches or compressions. That's how we're going to find the new d of cosine if we have the d of sine already. Vice versa, so if I have a cosine function, so I'll just draw a little graph of the cosine function here. What? OK, so this is d of cosine. The rising midline will always be further to the left of the d of cosine, right? Because by definition, the rising midline rises up into a mountain. So if I'm trying to go from cosine to sine, we know they're 90 degree shifts of one another. So we'll take the existing d of cosine, and we will subtract, because it's further to the left, we will subtract 90 over k to get that rising midline point. OK? And I'm subtracting again because I have a further left shift that I'm trying to calculate here. If you don't understand what I just explained, you can always rewatch it in the lesson video, or you can smile and nod, and you can memorize these formulas. That's OK to do. We're going to box them up. We'll use them. So I'm going to show you how we would do that on the previous example. We currently have a sine function on our previous example, and I want to make it into a cosine function. So I'm going to use this formula over here. 
And I'm going to start with the d of sine, and I'll just add 90 over k, and that will give me the new d of cosine. OK? So let's calculate d of cosine here. Should equal the existing d of sine plus 90 over k. So I have previous example on the last page. So what's the existing d of sine? Negative or positive? Positive, because it's a right shift. So 30, and what's our k? OK, so 30 plus 90 over 4, you'll, you will get some decimals for this one. That's OK. So what do we get? Fifty two point five, right? Is that right? Yeah. So this indicates if it's positive, that means it's a right shift. If it's negative, that's gonna tell you you have a left shift. So when I create the cosine function for this from here, I'll just replace sine with cosine and then I'll replace the negative thirty with negative fifty two point five. The new cosine shift. Everything else is the same. The K, the A, and the D. Or sorry, the K, the A, and the C. Does this look accurate as far as the location of the maximum on our graph? Does 52.5 kind of look like where this maximum is? Yeah. I think that looks pretty accurate. So that's probably a good sign that we got the correct D of cosine. So just for your own knowledge, if we get out positive there, that's indicating a right shift. Okay. Any questions on this one? Okay, last two are going to be a little bit quicker. This one just gives us information and we're going to put it together and we're going to figure out the equation. So a sinusoidal, sorry, a little typo here. This should have an I, sinusoidal, right in between the O and the D. Sinusoidal function has an amplitude of 3, period of 180, and a maximum point at 0, 5. Represent the function in two different ways. And when I say two different ways, I mean one sine equation and one cosine equation. So what pieces of information do we know out of A, K, D, and C here? A is 3. A is 3, that's correct. That's the amplitude. K is not 180, but we can use 180. OK. So 360 over the period, which will give us 2. Not quite. So if we think about our wave function, it says that the maximum is right on the y-axis up at 5. So C is, C is the midline. So I actually want to figure out where the middle of my graph is if I know where the top is. I mean, I think it's helpful just to kind of like visualize what's happening. I'm not, I'm just drawing like a general sketch. I'm not drawing it perfectly or anything. So what do I know about the, the distance between this C value midline and the maximum? What do I know about the distance in between them? from like here to here? It's five. It's not five. five. No. Zero. You're saying it's five on the y. Five is all the way the other way. That's the midline. Five. five is at the top. That's five is the very top. Yeah. And zero is where it starts to zero. That's five. Now what's the zero? The C, that line that I drew, that dotted line is just the middle of the graph. It doesn't zero. mean it's at zero. What's the, what is that middle of We don't know where zero is right now. Five is the other way. So, Remember how the amplitude tells us the difference between like the height of the mountain and the, and the depth of the valley? So if I count down the amplitude, Three, two. C must be at 2. We'll find D in a second. We're doing C right now. So if I count down the amplitude from the maximum, I'll hit the middle. 
And then if I count down the amplitude again, I'll hit the minimum. We don't really need to know the minimum here, but if you wanted to find it, you could. So C is going to be two. Basically what we do is we do max minus amplitude. Okay, D. Firstly, we need to decide, are we finding a cosine function to start with or a sine function to start with? Which would I start with based on the information given? What do you guys think? So in order to do sine, I would have to have information about the rising midline. Do I have information about the rising midline? What equation uses information about the maximum? Cosine, right? Okay, so maximum, this tells me that I'm probably going to start with cos. And where is the maximum? What's the x coordinate of the max, Jose? Um, zero. So that is actually d of cosine right there. Yeah, so the maximum is on the y-axis, right? So it's going to be at zero. So d of cos is zero. So let's start with our first equation here. f at x equals a cos kx minus d, which we don't really need to do minus d, so I'm just going to do 2 times x here, and then plus c. Then we're going to find d of sine using the equations above. So if I have a cosine function and I'm trying to make it into a sine equation, I'll use the formula on the right above, which is that the d of sine will equal the existing d of cosine minus 90 over k. So we're going to do d of cos minus 90 over k. What's the d of cos again? Because, yeah, it's on zero. Zero minus 90 over the k value, which is 2. So we'll get, yep. So this indicates 45 left, right? Okay, and then you're just going to finish the second equation there. So switch sine to cosine, or switch cosine to sine, sorry, other way around. Keep the k and the c and the a. And then we're going to put in negative 45, so minus, uh, plus 45 when we put it in, switches signs. Okay, so this is our first answer. This will be our second option. Okay, you guys are going to try the last one. I'll give you a couple minutes head start and see what you can do with it. This is the last question, and then we'll take it up. So I'm going to pause here. OK, so we get 2 for A. How about K? 4. So we do 360 over the period, which is 90. D of, so we're finding cosine for this one, right, to start, because it gives us info about the max. So what did we get for D of cos? 0, the x coordinate of the maximum. And then what did you guys find for C? should be negative 4. The max is at negative 2. If we count down the amplitude from that, then we're going to get negative 4. So you can see it on my picture here. So max is at negative 2. Then I counted down the amplitude, which gave us negative 4 for the C value. Again, you can calculate it just by doing max minus amplitude. So this is what your first equation should look like for cosine. And then I'm going to give you guys a couple seconds to calculate D of sine. See what you can get there. So we start with D of cosine for this one because it gives us info about the maximum. So if it, if it told me the rising midline is at this location, then I would start with sine. But it's telling me info about the max, which gives me info about the D of cos. OK, so we'll get negative for this one. Um, D of cos minus 90 over K. So we'll get 0 minus 90 over 4. So negative 22.5. So when you put it in your formula, you have plus, right? Plus 22.5. So you have to switch the sign. OK, any questions on this one?
Tá.